In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to build a high-converting dropshipping product page. If you're new to dropshipping or you're struggling to make sales, this video is for you. I'm going to walk you through all the elements that you need to include on your product page to make it irresistible to your customers. My name is Thomas. I am a seasoned dropshipper with close to five years of experience and I have helped thousands of entrepreneurs build their online stores. So grab your laptop, take some notes and let's get started. The first step to building a successful dropshipping product page is to find a product to sell. And this we already did in episode three of this series. If you haven't seen that yet, make sure to watch the previous video. And for this video, I'm going to create a product page for the sofa cover that we found in the last video. Okay, so this is the product that we're going to make a product page for. Now I've already checked if this product is on AliExpress, which you can do very easily by using this Chrome extension where you can search for images on AliExpress. As you can see, they are probably also dropshipping it because it's all over AliExpress. And uh, let's open this up so we can see it is exactly the same as what they're offering. They are using the same images. So now we know that we can sell this too. All right, so now that we know that we can sell this, I'm going to use an app that allows us to basically copy this product page. And if we just take a quick look at that product page, it this store already looks very good. So what we can do is go to apps and search for copy. As you can see, it's right here. So uh, this is the app that you want to have. Click add app. All right, the app is installed. Now all we have to do is click import a single product, go here, copy their URL, and then click import product. And as you can see, it brings us to this page right here. Here you can already change some things. You can change the pricing. You can change everything. I'm just going to leave everything the same, but just remove this and not make it public yet. And we can change this too. So let's just say Sova covers. This is the URL that we get and we can remove the name. That's it, gonna import the product. All right, as you can see, now we pretty much already have a product page. Of course, there's some things missing, but yeah, this is how fast you can create a product page by just copying it. Obviously, we want to improve it because we are going to compete with them. So we want to make sure that we're actually giving a better offer or uh, making a product, better product page, better description. So yeah, let's go ahead and now improve this product page. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the copy. And what I'm going to use is a concept that I learned from Russell Brunson, where you start the page with emotion, then logic, followed by fear. What that means will become clear once I start editing it, but basically just going to go in here to the product and start editing this text in a way that, in my opinion, it becomes better. All right, let's start with the title. For the title, what you can see, what they're doing here is just name the product. And that is pretty common, that's pretty normal. So it's not like a very bad thing to do because it's so normal, it also uh, comes across as trustworthy. But at the same time, this text right here is something that most uh, visitors of your page, they already read. So um, if someone opens your page, one of the first things they see is your logo, your images, of course, the offer, the pricing, um, and also this title right here. This is something most people read because if we go through our page, we can see that um, there's a lot of text here and not everyone is going to read this. The things that stand out first are like colored text, images, emojis, um, titles. So this place for me, is a great place to put something to keep them on that page. So what we're gonna do is we want to come up with something to like keep them intrigued and kind of like make them curious to continue to read on the page and at the same time touch on their emotion and um, give them like, show them in a very short, quick sentence or a couple words like, what they can expect. All right, so this is what I came up with, a brand new soap in five minutes without spending thousands. Here, what I'm saying is you can have a brand new sova in just five minutes without spending thousands. Like this is what everyone wants, obviously. And kind of like touches on the pain point and the benefit, more focused on the benefit, obviously. Um, so we're not like really touching on the emotion here. This kind of title, is something that you don't usually see on a product page. As you can see right now, it's pretty big. Let's see what it looks like on mobile. Here it's also looking pretty big. So what we're gonna do is remove this. And you basically just wanna play around with this. I 
was thinking about like how to word this to like make it even smaller. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, basically you want to make it short, but very powerful. And when someone gets onto your page, like if they read this, you want them to think, all right, I want to know more about this because you'll see that a lot of the people that get to your page, they leave immediately. Like most of the people that get to your page, they leave immediately. It's called bounce rate. It's people that leave pretty fast. Like maybe they see this and leave or they just do a quick check and they leave immediately. And by using a title like this, you can make them curious and you can get them to stay on your page longer. And you just want to keep the customer curious and at the same time convince them that they need this product. And basically when they scroll through your page, you want to keep showing things that are interesting, um, touch on the emotion and get them in an emotional state where they are very aware of the problem and very aware of the fact that you have the solution to that problem and it keeps them on a page, want to read more. And by the end of the page, they are convinced they need to buy this right now. And then with the discount that you're giving, combined with the fact that there's only a couple left in stock and there's also already 17 other people looking at this, like they are going to buy immediately from you. All right, then the next thing that we're going to do is this title right here. This is a question. I like asking questions at the start of the description not this kind of question because it doesn't really say anything. Again, you have very minimal text and a very small attention span of your visitors to keep them on that page and to convince them to stay and learn more and eventually buy your product. So if you start off with texts like a simple title and why you love it is of no value to the customer and um, you kind of like wasted an opportunity to let them stay there. All right, I... Road here, Dosha Sova looks old and damaged. This sofa cover makes it look brand new without having to buy an expensive sofa. Again, this is pretty long, but at the same time, we don't really need a title here. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Uh, and the reason why I like to start with a question is um, it's kind of like a psychological trick. You get them to say yes and sort of confirm with what you're saying. And therefore, they're more likely to confirm more and more after that because people naturally like to stay consistent with their first choice. So if they have kind of like said yes to you, they're more likely to say yes in the future and eventually say yes to your offer. So uh, that's why I like to start with a question that can be answered with yes. At the same time, you immediately touch on their problem. You immediately get them in that emotional state. They start to think, yes, my sofa also looks old and damaged and you can even make it more emotional by like, are you ashamed of your old and damaged sofa? Which touches even more on emotion. And then usually what people do is they ask this question and then they say like, you need this sofa cover, which again is like a wasted opportunity to tell something about this product. Instead of like asking the question and then answering it with a very simple sentence, you want to like think about this sentence and actually say something that uh, describes all the benefits. And it's like almost like the perfect solution to their problem, which they're now aware of because you asked them the question. So this soft cover makes it look like a brand new, people like, have it look like brand new without having to buy an expensive new uh, sofa. So you can like get the same effect without spending a lot of money and saving money is also one like psychological selling point, which is very strong in people. If you can help people save time or save money, like that's a very big benefit to people. All right. And then the next thing that we're going to do is I'm probably going to remove this and move this down here this is interesting because this is pretty important how do i choose my pack it's kind of like a more complicated product because people like hey they have different sizes of couches so they have to measure it and like they have to like change things in order to get the product or like they have to do something unless they already know like what their size of their sova is so that's like a pretty big obstacle that's why i think the competitor choose to uh, chose to like put this pretty far up in the description. For now, I'm just going to stick to the emotion logic fear. So what we do here, the title and this is like all emotion, like you want to get them in that emotional buying state where they can really think rationally. Sounds kind of evil, but you like want to have them in a state where they don't gonna like evaluate everything that you say, which you do by like asking these kind of questions and making them aware of the problem. And that's just what we're gonna do uh, at the beginning too. So I'm gonna move this down, like have this image first and then underneath that image, I'm going to make a couple bullet points that describe the problem and the solutions. All right, I came up with these four bullet points here, just four, um, again, focused on 
the uh, problems and the benefits and I put a little bit of space in between them so it becomes a little bit more clear. For now this is fine and we have focused enough on emotion to start like the logical part. Um, I'm just gonna check if they don't have like anything else. Obviously like premium quality, stuff like this, and the fact that it's warm, you want to mention it, but those are more uh, specifications and not necessarily like the emotion type of benefits. Of course, like the fact that it's premium quality, it's a USB and it's uh, definitely important, but it's not the most important thing. Of course, you want something to be of premium quality, but the customer cares more about the end result than if it's premium quality or not. Okay, so we finished the emotional part now we're moving on to the logical part and in here what we're going to do is basically answer questions that the customer has at the same time we're still like mentioning the usps and extra reasons to buy the product such as the premium quality uh, but also we want to like assure them that actually they can buy this product and it's a product for them you can see what the competitor did is uh, mention what this sofa cover is suitable for and how to choose their pack and for now i'm just gonna remove this let's do this and then do this it just makes it easier to read right so to me it seems like it's not all correct english so what we can do is use chat gpt i'm not even going to explain what this is because by now everyone should know this but uh, it's basically an ai that can help you with tasks like these and you can say like rewrite the following text in proper English and I forgot to paste the text as you can see now ChatGPT writes a better version of this text in proper English and now we can just copy it and that's it so it's easy as that and then continues with the premium quality that's fine this is more of like an emotional benefit I think I'm just gonna leave that in because it is a pretty important USB right now especially it's still winter so that's good and the energy prices USB like I said Helping people save money is always a good USB. So I'm going to leave that in. You can also check the supplier to see if there's any important information that's still missing. So it's better to have specifications on there just in case Sova cover buyers value a specific specification a lot. Then you at least have it on your page and they can find it. Because if they miss that crucial piece of information, then they're not going to buy from you because they don't know if their product has the right size, color, material, whatever it is that they're looking for. FAQ, I'm just gonna leave that here for now too. And then the guarantee as well. So basically we have the emotional part and from here it starts with the logical part and the fact that like the guarantee is always good to mention of course we already have this in other places on our page too. So we have like 100 day refund policy. We have like uh, there like USA quality which really doesn't mean anything it just helps to convert it stuff like that and then finally we have the fear part that's still missing and with fear we I don't mean that you want to scare your customer because that's obviously not what we want to do with fear I mean that you add something at the bottom that reminds them that you have a deal right now they only have one chance to buy it you don't really have to do this especially not if you're like building a brand or you can be a little bit more creative but with dropshipping, especially or if you're launching a new brand and you just want to get a lot of customers fast then i would say giving like a reminder of the offer that you have that usually helps a lot to like push the product and sell it right now i just need to check like what's the offer that we're given okay so we're given a 50 percent discount the offer is still like we took it from the competitor so we have to check this later but 50 percent discount and then 11 left in stock that's good what you can do for example clearance sale now again if you have a brand and you're selling a product and you always have a clearance sale and always have 50 percent off it like kind of like takes away from the trustworthiness of your brand but at the start when we're just going to test the product we just want to know if we can sell it and want to do everything we can to sell it so that's why we're just going to mention this all right so i don't know if it's correct english doesn't matter our stock is almost sold out and will take three months before we restart get one of the last ones now before it's sold out and the price goes back up all right so this is like our like fear part it's just a reminder of the offer that we're running right now and you want to create urgency scarcity you want to put them in an emotional state you took away all their objections by making everything logical and then finally you need to give that final push to like make them buy the product and with that our copywriting our description right now 
is finished, let's move on to the next part. Okay, now that we optimized our copy, it's time to take a look at the images. This is another crucial part of your product page and something that immediately stands out and every visitor obviously gets to see. So the first image that you show here, but also all the other content on your page is very important. What we're gonna do is just see if we can find even better images for this product specifically. The first thing that I noticed is that this drop down for some reason is not working. We actually need this because I actually found these colors that are, I think a little bit different from what the competitor is offering because they're only offering five colors. Now, maybe they're doing this because they have seen these are the five best sellers and you don't want to offer too many different options. For example, I think this option is probably not that popular anyways. So that's why they skip it. I would say this option right here, they are not offering, but actually it looks pretty good to me. So that's definitely something that we want to put on our page as well. All right, so we turned off the color swatches for now. I don't know why they're not working, I think because we don't have the paid theme, doesn't really matter for now. We right now we just have a drop down, and I'm just gonna add the light gray option and just see what else we can offer as well. All right, I added a couple images. Um, for the first image, I'm just gonna use the same image as they are with the ID that they have tested it and they figured out this is the best first image. Of course, we'll test the product. If it works, we can play around with different images as the first image to see which one works better. But uh, basically added an extra option, which is this light gray option, which I think a lot of people want. So that's why I added it. Also added this picture right here, which shows that it's very soft. And then the picture right here, which shows that it's kind of like sticky, which is also very important with this product. Then I added, let's see, this image right here, which again focuses on the softness because we don't really focus on that too much in the copywriting, but through this image, obviously it shows that it's soft and that's even better than just saying it. Then we have these images here that were already in here. And then I added this image, which again shows the softness and the sticky part. And then finally here at the bottom, I showed an image that uh, shows that the product can be washed, which is another benefit of this product. So in these images, I just try to show the benefits that we either do talk about in the copy or don't talk about in the copy. It doesn't really matter because an image, um, first of all, gets a lot more views. Most people watch the images and don't read the text. And second of all, you can like say a lot more in an image compared to like a sentence instead of like saying the product is soft because of this and this material here, the, the entire sentence is basically already in the image because you can see what it's made of. You can see that it's soft. Yeah, this helps for people to visualize it and comes across as even more trustworthy than just saying it in words. Now, one thing that's not on this page is a GIF. I do like to use GIFs for this product. Maybe it's not 100% necessary because it's pretty obvious how it works and people have seen how it works in the ad already. But in my experience, it helps a lot if you take a fragment of the ad, which clearly shows what this product does and how it works and show that on this page. Because right now we only show images of couches that already use the product, but the before and after effect in marketing works very, very well. So if you show an old couch, an old ugly couch, and then next to it show the couch, but with this cover and it looks brand new, then it's very clear what this product does. And you have a very clear visual of what you can expect when you buy this product. The images and offer are done. Let's move on to another very important part, maybe even the most important part, which is the offer. And by offer, I mean everything from pricing to how we present the product and what the customer expects to get. Right now, obviously, we just copy the competitor. It seems to me that they're offering it for very cheap and also the sizes here on AliExpress are in English, which makes it in centimeters, which makes it a little bit hard to tell what is what I'm expecting looking at this that 28 by 28 is this 70 by 70. All right, so that matches. So it, the 70 by 70 is the uh, $13 option here, which means let's go to their page. We offer free shipping for all orders over $49. So for the cheapest option, which is the 28 by 28, they charge shipping. Uh, otherwise they only have like a $16 margin. I'm not going to charge shipping and I'm just going to go with a $16 margin. The reason for this is all the customers that get to see this ad, they don't buy in the first place. They know the price. So they know it's like $30 plus 
I don't know, $5 shipping. Then they get targeted by an ad of me and they see it's $30. They see free shipping. So that's not even in here, but it's it says free shipping here and free shipping here. So they will see free shipping. They basically have the same product, but for a better offer than the competitor. And I like to always start a little bit cheaper than the competitor because they obviously are already spending uh, money on this product, on this ad, which makes it hard to compete with. So if you're going to compete with a competitor, try and make it better. That's why we do this whole improvement. That's why I'm offering a slightly better offer to the customer is to compete with them, hopefully, make their ads more expensive the algorithm pushes our ad more because we get more customers and people want to buy from us not from them and that way we kind of like compete with them and get a bigger market share all right so the pricing i'm just going to leave as it is for now of course you should always check if everything matches in here because here are a lot more options than what they are offering but i get why they're not offering all the options because if you have too many options especially because it's already a more difficult product because people like i said have to measure everything you don't want to have too much options probably you just want to have the options that make the most sense for the most used couches basically so i'm just going to leave that as it is trust that they are already selling it and have tested this and already optimized it uh, i'm just going to leave the same price but we just a little bit cheaper because we don't charge shipping so that's that then the next thing is how we present the offer. We, we already worked on this, obviously, by changing the copy and changing the images. There's only uh, one piece missing, which we will do after the offer. So I'll get to that later. But then the only thing that's left is what the customer expects to get. And that's also kind of our marketing. That's just one thing that we kind of like want to check to make sure that it's clear because if the expectation doesn't match the reality, uh, you'll get chargebacks, etc. People buy a product for the reason what they expect to get, not necessarily what they are really getting. Of course, it's different for every product. And if you're in a very strict niche where people really look at the specifications, there are always a group of people that value the specifications more than the marketing, but the mass always mostly looks at the marketing. All right, so what we have to do is just go through our page and see if it's clear that what people get, how to buy it, and basically everything that people need to know before they buy this product. So at first, of course, we have the marketing. Now, this we mentioned, of course, if you want to make sure, you can double check if this contains all the possible options for sovas. Here, we see it's, it's not very clear because this is the image above now. So we probably want to switch around these two images so that this image... Uh, is right here and this image is right here all right as you can see we made a small change here i moved this up here i don't think it looks very good because it's all centered you can go ahead and move it to the side what's more important is what it looks like on mobile at least it looks better on mobile here everything is aligned to the left i don't want to spend too much time right now i'm already spending more time time than i usually would if i test the product but that's just for the sake of this video i just want to test it and see if this is clear to people if i see our conversion rate or we're getting a lot of questions from customers then we can always go ahead and make it even more clear we didn't really change a lot i think the offer for now is fine to go with and good enough to start testing all right our page is almost finished as you can see, now you may be thinking it doesn't look as good as the competitor, which I get, but what you have to understand is this is a general store. Once we see that this product is selling and is doing really well, then we'll put more effort into branding the store towards this specific product. But for now, this is good enough. I have seen very good conversion rates with this exact like layout of our store and what's on the store what we offer, what we write, everything is far more important than what it looks like, which I've noticed in like four years of doing conversion optimization. There is one more thing missing on this page. If we scroll down, as you can see, there are no reviews yet. So let's go ahead and make sure to import some reviews. For the reviews, I'm going to use Lux, which is already installed on our store. We did this in episode two of this series. It's very simple. You can go to import reviews and then drag this to your bookmarks bar. Let's uh, open that up as you can see. And then it's very simple. You go to AliExpress. Usually I like to import from Amazon because you get like a little bit higher quality reviews, but I couldn't find reviews for this exact product. So I'm just going to use the AliExpress reviews. And what I'm gonna do is click this button. You can choose how many reviews you want to import. I think there were 52, so let's select 100 reviews. Let's just do all ratings, actually four stars and up. We can select the product here all countries to English and then you can 
click preview and import and then you have to choose the ones that you want to show on your page so you can select which ones are not good which ones are good um, first here underneath the title we see that they have 27 reviews it's not like a lot what you can do is import reviews from amazon from a different product just to fill it up just like text reviews which are very basic for now this should be good enough you can clearly see the effect of the product like this image right here is great you can play around and choose which ones you do want to show and do not want to show obviously you want to remove images that don't look good because it can like have the opposite effect so be very careful what images you show in the reviews this is basically how you import reviews it's super simple and now our page is finished that's it our product page is done this is usually what my pages look like when i start testing them obviously like i said earlier once they start to do well you want to continue to improve it and dig deeper into why people buy this get more information on the niche and everything to improve the conversion rate but this is perfectly fine to start testing your product thank you for watching make sure to subscribe to see next week's episode where i'm going to create killer ads to sell this product so that will be in the next episode thanks again for watching and have a nice day